Let's break some rules today. Would y'all like that? If we broke some rules today? How many of you intentionally break rules? We're rebels, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> well, what I'm talking about are grammar rules or prescriptive grammar rules to be exact. Prescriptive meaning the rules that people think should be however arbitrary they may seem. Much of my information about grammar actually comes from a professor who is also a linguist and also a grammarian. And grammarian isn't just a fancy word Toastmasters made up, it's a real thing. <laughs> Many people also don't realize that Shakespeare, he was a master of English. He studied English. And he wasn't really a poet, although a lot of people will think of him as a poet. He simply wrote poems in his plays, but yes, Shakespeare was a master of English, and if he, if he can do it, we can do it, more or less, as far as writing and grammar goes. Now, grammar originated from oral traditions, I mean, because writing hasn't been around for a, a while, maybe a couple of centuries at best, but grammar really originated from oral communication, because the whole purpose of grammar is to help us be able to structure and communicate with others about what is successful and what isn't. So when you're speaking, if you're able to communicate with someone, I, I call it grammatically correct, more or less. So there are three rules that people think are there but aren't real. One is the split infinitive. The second is the, the second rule are having prepositions at the end of sentences. And the third rule is are having conjunctions at the beginning of sentences. And I'll explain to you what these rules are. First, I'm going to go ahead and break a, 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 two of those rules, and then you can figure out what they are, maybe, and I'll go ahead and explain to you later. To boldly go where no man has gone before. I love breaking rules. I wish I had like a, a sound of a breaking glass <laughs> as a sound effect. So the split infinitive, well, I learned what an infinitive was in Germany when I was studying their grammar, because it's really helpful to be able to do that. But So a split infinitive, firstly, you have to have an infinitive. So to go is an infinitive of the verb to uh, go, because there's no past or future. And infinitive means infinity. It can happen any time. So to go is the infinitive of the word go. Okay. To inform, to like, to dislike are all infinitives. So when you take an adverb and you sandwich around, the, to, you take to go and you put boldly as an adverb inside of that, the middle part is perfectly legitimate in English because people, people don't like split infinitives arbitrarily, but it originated from Latin words because Latin, in Latin, the infinitive is a single word and it would be illegal to split that word and make two parts, but in English an adverb can go anywhere there's a space in the sentence. So you can take boldly and put it in to go, boldly, or boldly to go, or to boldly go. It's however you want to make it. The second rule people think there are are the prepositions at the end of sentences. And part of the reason for this so-called rule is people think of the word pre or the prefix pre, mm -hmm. and so it has to go before something else like a noun phrase or any, any other kinds of words that have to go at the end of prepositions. So if I ask you, what are you talking about? People think that's illegal somehow. But it's often wordy to actually have to rewrite that sentence to make it fit whatever kind of arbitrary rule that people think there are. But say if I ask, what, uh, let's begin, that's perfectly legitimate, even though begin is a preposition at the end of that sentence. But how else are you going to reword it? It's perfectly legitimate in English. Uh, I think that rule also comes from Latin. The third rule, or the contradiction, or the conjunctions at the beginning of sentences, like and, but, or, perfectly legitimate. As a matter of fact, I was reading my manual, my project manual, and the description, and I noticed the word but at the beginning of the sentence. And one of the reasons why you might take that approach is if you want that pause, because of the whole purpose of a period is a pause. To have a longer pause than maybe simply a comma. So if you stick the word but 
at right at the beginning of a sentence, then it negates the previous sentence, just like it does not if you have the, the word but in the same sentence. You could also use the word and, like if you make a statement, maybe a statement of fact, and then you place the word and at the, at the beginning of the next sentence to really emphasize that pause there, and it's per perfectly legitimate in English. And if it's in the Toastmasters manual, why, why not allow it to be, <laughs> be correct? School teachers, I think, and, and college professors, if they're not if if they're not studiers of language, I think they teach us these rules because they think the rules are actually a part of language. But they don't really explain the purpose for being there. Like a split infinitive, I mean, they say, don't split your infinitives. When re in reality, they splitting the infinitive comes from the Latin language. I mean, it's okay if you're communicating with your audience, I say, because it's all oral communication anyway. I, and I say we can all improve in that area, and that's why we're here in Toastmasters, I believe. Are there any questions now for the next 45 seconds? Is there any, are there any questions? Because if not, I guess that wraps it up. Cody. Yes. Do you think people write more grammatically correct than they speak? No, not, not by a long shot. I mean, because you have dangling participles and it, it just miscommunications. I think 95%, I think actually Michael Drought, that professor I was talking about, says that 95% of people actually speak grammatically correct, uh, or 95% of our, our speaking. Any other questions? Yes? Don't you think the use of the, do you think the use of the English language has evolved or metamorphosed mm -hmm. over the last 50 years? It, yeah, or language so changes. In previous years. Ch language changes all the time. Like, when we used to say uh, letting off steam happened because of steam engines. So just little pieces of language just always evolve. And like we don't use uh, record, mm -hmm. like to talk about records nowadays, but CDs and, and discs and things. So I guess that wraps it up. Thank you.